Today we are talking about the story of concrete. When we are talking about civil engineering alone, we cannot avoid concrete in any ways. Whatever the structure may be, whatever its use, whatever its construction methods, whatever its size, whatever its cost, there will be concrete uh, in wherever structures we can see it. Even it is present from 6500 BC to current year constructions. Even when we consider Eiffel Tower, we know it, it, its superstructure, the structure above the ground surface, it is not having any concrete part. Its foundation is made with concrete. So we cannot avoid concrete in a civil engineering structure. Okay. So today we are talking about that brief history and a little bit technical terms about concrete. Okay. So initially the brief history about it starts from 6500 BC long back BC 6500 in UAE in there a group called Nevada traders constructed some cisterns some housing projects or and some road projects similar to concrete with similar to concrete okay so that is the oldest we know it's about 8500 years back from now okay so before 8500 years we had a similar material called concrete but specific is still unknown okay so after that when it comes to bc around 3000 we know when it is like egypt obviously the giza pyramids and other pyramids and china obviously wall of china great wall of china okay so in these two massive structures there are evidence of using a particular concrete like material and in these two the material was similar to lime plus gypsum lime and gypsum was mixed and in addition to that when sand and water was added to it 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 resembled a concrete current concrete okay so in egypt in giza pyramid they used these mixtures to adhere stones to join both the stones they used this mixture and in china they used the same mixture similar mixture to join stones on the great wall of china okay and after that in these all were isolated occurrence of concrete isolated evidence is scattered all around the globe its widespread use was evidently found in bc around 600 it was at the time of roman empire in at roman empire time there was a widespread use, they constructed roads, they constructed aqueducts, they constructed buildings, churches, whatever not, palaces, everything with similar thing. But the specific of it was unknown unfortunately when this Roman Empire fell at AD 474. So Roman Empire was unfortunately vanished at this year. The secrets of that particular mixture that substituted concrete at that time was very unknown until 15th century more approximately AD 1440 when archaeologists found out the mixture for this particular thing and this it was volcanic ash plus lime plus sea water okay so this was the Roman Empire using instead of concrete or the main particular they were using for construction. It was used for joining bricks, it was used for construction of separate bricks, it was used for construction of arches, okay. This was the mix. And major breakthrough for the current scenario of civil engineering and the major breakthrough that, this, that changed the story of civil engineering was on 
1824 and that was the year when a person called Joseph Aspidin he resides at England he mixed chalk and lime he heated it and then or burned it and then powdered it and that powdered particle was later known as cement and as we know cement is the main constitute that now comprises of concrete okay so this is the brief history of concrete how this came into being there are a, a couple more points to add but we'll come to that later and concrete by current scenario we know it as a mixture of cement fine aggregate and coarse aggregate when mixed with water you will get concrete okay so concrete is cement plus fine aggregate fine aggregate means very fine sand maybe sand or uh, river sand m sand usually we use it as m sand plus coarse aggregate coarse aggregate and with mixed with water you will get concrete okay so this particular thing changed the game and it had a little bit drawback as we know compressive force compressive force means if this is a concrete block compressive if this is any subject compressive force is two forces acting towards each other I am compressing it like this okay so this is compressive force okay two forces my both hands are applying force towards each other that is compressive force and this cone gate was excellent in that if suppose uh, for example M20 mix that's a technical thing we will explain later M20 mix compressive strength will be 20 Newton per M square okay so for each millimeter square of this area concrete can endure 20 newtons on average it can vary okay so this was compressive strength but when I pull these ends when I apply forces away from the subject like this I am pulling both ends that is called as tension this was compression and when I apply tension it was very weak it was only about 2.0 point Newton per mm square that is around 1 by 10th of compressive strength okay so when I am pulling this mixture cement fine aggregate coarse aggregate and water it will easily break when I am taking concrete so that was a major drawback of concrete at that time so we used to construct arches like this if this were pillars it was very comfortable to construct pillars and then we would construct arches so that by arch action there will be only compression there, there won't be any tension okay so that's why we see uh, gothic structures or churches windows or most of the olden age things that comprising of arches more than beams or lindels okay then the major last major breakthrough we introduced in 19th century we introduced reinforced cement concrete okay if this was a cement block this was plain cement block we introduced what reinforcements that is steel reinforcements steel bars lengthening from this point to this point and this point to 
this point into take tensile load so steel bar as we know steel is a material who, which can take high tension load it will not fail with tension it is having very high tension and hence steel was embedded inside this old concrete plain concrete and it was known as reinforced cement concrete okay so that we call it as rcc okay so obviously this plain mixture without reinforcements reinforcements were called as pcc or plain cement concrete okay i hope it's clear so pcc and rcc we still use pcc for road construction village road constructions or uh, basement planing or floors or filling of floors etc we won't be using any reinforcement or steel we will just mix all these things and lay it down but for the beam construction or uh, roof slab construction we will be using rcc that's that's why this old arch construction was substituted with beam construction because we substituted we considered steel reinforcement in here so that there won't be any bending like this it won't fail because of this reinforcements okay so this was reinforced cement concrete and why steel why did we choose steel as reinforcement why not any other metal copper uh, aluminium iron cast iron pig iron there are so many varieties why not any other metals why steel we'll come to that so that was rcc and pcc so steel rcc steel is a very tensile material it can take on average up to it can vary 400 newton per mm square remember the change for concrete compressive strength was around 50 or 20 newton per mm square but in case of steel for tension it may be around 400 newton per mm square around value approximate value okay and the second quality and the main quality that made the researchers or constructors or contractors select steel was coefficient of thermal expansion what is coefficient of thermal expansion if suppose this is a concrete block and i have embedded a reinforcement steel reinforcement any steel reinforcement and i am constructing a beam on it this is a beam and suppose it is exposed on the sun and it's getting heated okay so what happens when it heats this will expand the rate at which the concrete expands and the rate at which the steel reinforcement expands shouldn't be different because if it is different if suppose coefficient of thermal expansion is larger for steel than concrete this will elongate bigger and there will be breakage if it is lesser concrete will be, will elongate more and there will be breakage okay so for adequate bonding and load transfer the coefficient of thermal expansion should be same as concrete okay and that is around 1.1 into 10 raised to minus 5 per degree celsius okay that of concrete is 1.2 into 10 raised to around 1.2 into 10 raised to minus 1 per degree celsius okay so that is the main thing main point that made steel the app person okay 
and there are more minor things ductility what is ductility ductility is the ease by which any metal can be made into a thin wire gold is a very ductile material that's why we use gold for ornamental making you can uh, elongate it as much as we want okay so ductility is the ease by which it can be made into a thin wire okay and ductility is very high for steel and one more thing if ductility is less this beam will be failing much faster if this is a beam and this is steel reinforcement if there is no ductility it will break suddenly okay there won't be any uh, elongation they will they will just break like a choke okay if there is ductility as steel is having right now it will elongate like this okay so what is the advantage even if the beam fail or the roof above us fails we will know about it at a safer time if it is failing the beam above us is is failing we will know it's about failing because it will be bending or the cracks may be forming because of ductility okay okay i, I hope i am not too fast and there are more bonding bonding is bonding between there will be metal bonding with concrete and steel bond there should be adequate bond like it should be acting like a single composite material rcc okay and then it should be corrosion resistant obviously and thermal resistant and it should be bendable and it should be weldable okay so these are the primary criteria that made uh, civil engineers select steel as reinforcements that is why steel is selected i know uh, corrosion resistance and thermal resistance are a bit bad compared to other uh, metals for steel but even though when we prioritize in this order steel wins okay that is why rcc is important so rcc now concrete will be taking the major share of compression and steel reinforcement will be taking major share of tension okay i hope it's clear then one one more point the story is complete one more tail end is there how do you technically name or how is the nomenclature comes with respect to strength this strength okay for concrete there will be mix value this m20 means mix 20 this 20 means 20 newton per ml square for this particular mix there will be a value for example 1 1 is to 2 is to 4 where 1 will be cement 2 will be fine aggregate and 4 will be coarse aggregate okay so if m20 is 1 is to 2 is to 4 that means for each part of cement there should be two parts of fine aggregates and four parts of coarse segregates that's it okay that's it so it's it should it shouldn't be that equal maybe uh, m20 is 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 okay so then this 20 means if we take a concrete cube of 15 cm side we cast a concrete cube with 15 cm side okay and test it with compression it should be having 20 newton per mm square okay so it has various values like m15 m20 m25 
M twenty M thirty M thirty five M forty. Okay, so then you can also increase, but then we we won't be having this ratio line value. You will have to design that. We we'll call it design mix. Keep it at there. And steel, steel, we have three variants. Fe two fifty. Fe four fifteen and Fe five hundred. Okay, and this Fe two fifty is called as mild steel. Okay, and Fe four fifty and Fe five hundred is known as HYSD steel. That is high yield strength deformed steel. Okay, so we take steel and we let it undergo through a set of processes, and after that treatment and processes, you will get HYSD steel that is much higher than the old obsolete conventional FE two fifty mild steel. Okay, so that was around the introduction for concrete. So we talked about history, we talked about what is RCC and PCC, and we talked about the general basic terms related to in related to strength of steel and concrete okay